I think that I am live. Hello guys, let me know if I am. Let me know if I'm not because I cannot see anybody yet here. Uh, I feel like I'm alone a little bit. But definitely let me know if I'm uh, if I'm live because <clears throat> I want to I want to start as soon as possible. But unless I know that I'm live, I cannot really start. Nobody's in the chat yet. Okay, let's I'm going to wait for a little bit and see if uh if anybody comes around. Actually, first of all, let me check if you can you guys can hear me well or not. Um, yeah, I still have uh, still have zero people watching. Oh, there it goes. Hello, hello. Okay, I, I can see people coming. Okay, uh, question. Can you guys hear me well? Do I sound well? Because I don't know how I sound. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, привет, привет, привет. Hello, everybody. We can hear you. We can hear you just fine. Hello. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Okay, let me just go back. It's all good. Okay, wonderful. So now I know that I can start. Um, I have a couple of things to say first. I have a couple of things that, that I'm very excited about to share with you guys. Um, the bad thing about, um, about me, you know, recording with this software is that I don't see the live count of people. When I'm using uh, the Google Hangouts, I see like exactly right in the corner. So many people are watching right now or like 20, 15, 10. Uh, this one is kind of like delayed. Only now I see that people are watching, which is a little bit, a little bit upsetting. So let me see what you guys are saying in the chat and then I can start. Hide. Uh, I'm still doing a little bit of some okay, perfectly da chudesna. Okay, good. Okay. Um, let me say hi to you all in, uh, in the chat. Hey, so. Hello everybody, this is another live stream. I don't know, I've lost count of how many we've done. A uh, couple of things, a couple of things that I want to say before we uh, move on. Uh, first thing is, as many of you know, the shirts are here. And it's my bad that I didn't bring a shirt for myself. As you can, as you can see, I'm wearing, where's that? Nike, I'm looking at myself on the screen, it's on a different side, uh, Nike shirt. So I didn't bring mine, but I have a couple of shirts right here next to me. And unfortunately, I didn't bring uh, my size, so I cannot wear it today. This one right here, a couple of uh, different, you know, uh, designs. This one, and this one is actually my favorite, my personal favorite. Tanet Naverna has been fluent on it. So, uh, and you can, you guys can see other designs. They are in the description down below. You can check it out. In fact, we can go with you guys right now. Okay, let me get out of here. Be fluent in Russian, and we can uh, look look at them with you together. Okay, let me make myself a little smaller. Oh yeah, of course I'm not gonna have access on live stream. Of course. Um, okay, let's go to incognito mode, it should be fine. Um, those designs we've done with the people, with the, with the students who are watching the channel, I uh, had a contest, people, people participated in that. Okay, let me hide this and, not, and add another screen, which is, Boom, and let me put myself on top of it so you can see me too. Let me make myself a little smaller. Okay, camera smaller. Boom, put myself in the corner. Okay, shop, and right here you can see all the shirts that we've designed. They came out a little bit differently than than on the screen, of course, because you know the printing is different from when you put it like a uh, on on a laptop on a computer. But they're pretty close, you know. They're pretty close to what uh, I wanted them to look like. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. So you guys check it out and order the shirts to you. Unfortunately, one thing that I want to say though is when I tried to ship it internationally, it was way more expensive than I thought. The actual shipping was way more expensive than I thought. So. Unfortunately, we're gonna have some trouble shipping internationally. It's gonna be very expensive. Um, right now, the price for an international shipment is twelve dollars. So when you check out fifteen for the shirt and twelve more for shipment. Unfortunately, guys, I'm a small guy, small business, small channel, you know. So it's I'm still learning the process. But as time goes on, of course, we're gonna find different ways how we can make it cheaper for you guys let me put it back to myself uh, make it cheaper for you guys because i want everybody to have shirts who want them and this is just an unfortunate thing that i cannot do that but 
let me go back to the chat. Um, I got you online. I'm excited. Shirley Fernandez. Okay, chat. Boom. So you guys can see too. Shatwanji. Uh, the live stream is offline. Why? I don't. I don't understand why. It's it's online now. I don't know. Привет. Okay. For those who have tried Rosetta Stone, do you think it's good for non Russian or other, or other languages? I haven't tried myself, of course, because uh, I'm a Russian speaker. I don't need uh, to learn Russian. But my girl, my girlfriend had tried it, and she loved it. I think personally, I think it's 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 great because it kind of aligns with the way I teach. Uh, because it it doesn't teach you, it doesn't give you any English words. It's just straight Russian. But it's designed so that whatever you've learned in the past, based on that knowledge, you're gonna learn future words. So in my opinion, it's great, in my opinion. But some people have been talking bad about it because it's kind of expensive. Maybe it's too expensive for, for what it provides, but the way it teaches is pretty, pretty solid. So if you're looking to buy one, if you're looking to subscribe, I truly, truly recommend it because I think it's great. Personally, I think it's great. So another thing that I wanted to say is you guys have to be on our Facebook community. Let me let me show it to you all. Okay, I have to go back. Um, it's kind of hard to upgrade this all at once. I should have had, had these tabs open before I started, right? You live and you learn, I guess. Okay, it's, it's loading. Uh, community be fluent in Russian. Guys, it's very, very good because we all are sharing ideas uh, there we are sharing the sources that we use for learning Russian um, I'm always there I'm always commenting always giving you guys feedback so if you're looking for the way to interact with me ask me questions as you can see here I announced this live stream um, while I was driving to here so yeah um, I found TV series Kuchnia today so for example she shared what she had found other people have been sharing other stuff too Ashish Prasad have been sharing his stuff over here um, so it's it's a great resource for for an exchange of ideas because we truly 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 care about each other here it's 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 a big family where we can all learn together and I'm sharing my stuff with you guys so while you are watching this the link is in the, is in the description so go and check it out join I would love to have you there I would love to help you out as well this is kind of like a more personal setting in that community because I see that you truly care about learning and you're not just passively watching. And it's a you know it's a select select group of people. I don't approve everybody. I approve those who are who are willing to learn. Okay. And if you're not participating in in any discussions, and if you're not like liking or watching or seeing stuff, then unfortunately I'm gonna kick you out because it's not a community where you just you know consume. It's also a community where you share stuff. Okay. So those two things that I want to say is the shirts and the community. Um, Check out the shirts if you like them or not. Please let me know. It's not even uh, you buying. Oh, somebody's already asking to join. That's great. Um, so it's not even about you buying the shirts. I just wanted to check. I just want you to check it out, see how it looks, and give me feedback, guys. Before we start, before we uh, get into this, I am doing this only for two years. Only two years. So while you're learning Russian, I'm also learning how to teach. I'm also learning how to share my ideas with you guys. So it's not it's not something that I that I know how to do. I've never done this before. So if you have any feedback, if you have any ideas, please let me know. I mean taking everything and then making something out of it. You guys have been asking me to, to make the shirts. Here they are. You can buy them, purchase them. You asked me to get to make a course for uh, you know the beginners from the very start to the basics of Russian the book Russian 101 is out you know for you guys I made the book for you so I am listening to you guys and I'm giving you guys what you need so if you see me doing anything you're welcome to give your input give your feedback give your ideas on those things at any any time last thing of course of course Instagram on Instagram, we're sharing great ideas as well. Uh, I'm giving you more more, more um, content. It's more of a vocabulary base because just the platform itself, it's not enough time for the video for me to explain something. So most likely, I'm going to share with you the vocabulary. 
just list of words, for example. So check it out as well. But the topic for this, you know, for this um, live stream is verbs of motion with prefixes. As you might have checked out before, I've made a video about prefixes and just verbs, how different prefixes um, change the verbs. But today, since a lot of you wanted to learn, um, what are they called, verbs of motions, I decided to you know, make it a live stream because I can actually go in depth and explain everything in detail so you guys can understand it better and so you can stick to your memory, memory for much longer. Before we start, let me just see what you guys are texting in the chat. Let me ask you uh, questions. Is there any free apps I could try to help improve my Russian? Uh, two apps. Hello Talk and Tandem. They are great because, and also three apps, I guess, and also VK. Hello Talk and Tandem, it's language exchange apps. So you're finding a partner that, for example, speaks Russian, but wants to learn English. And you speak English, but you, but you want to learn Russian. So you kind of exchange English with Russian. You teach him English, he's going to teach you Russian. And that's how you kind of learn, that's how you kind of adapt, and that's how you kind of um yeah expand your knowledge on, on russian so i recommend those two and vk is kind of like a russian version of facebook but it's less it's more i would say secluded put it back on me it's more secluded it's more private when it comes to facebook if you put something in the public you know uh, community it's going to show on your timeline as well which personally I don't like. I don't understand that. It. it should be like a different thing. So Vicky is more secluded. There are a lot of communities with a lot of memes, jokes, I don't know, movie movie lovers, music lovers. Um, there are a whole bunch of, you know, just motivational, for example, communities. So it's the community of Russians that are doing something with their lives, right? It's like a Facebook, but for mostly Russians, mostly, like 95%, uh, I think. But since it's getting popular, foreigners join too. So, and on that platform, there are a whole bunch of Russians. All of my classmates are on it. And pretty much every single Russian, you know, millennial is on it as well. So you can find them, talk to them, you can see what they consume, you can kind of dive into the culture. So VK is more for, I would say, intermediate to advanced people who just want to learn about the culture and learn about the language as a whole. Because, as you know, Russians are not really, you know, into the um, mainstream media like that. Because, you know, none of us are speaking English. Not, not a lot of us are speaking English, so we are in our own VK community, so check that out too. But um, let me see if you guys have any more questions. Is Duolingo any good for Russian? I actually made a video about that. I like it, but it has um, it has their you know challenges. Let me put the chat on. Has has their own challenges. Uh, what is Rosetta Stone? Check it out. Russian. How can I how can I say put could Pet cute words to him. Um, just a, a couple of things. You can say rybka, which means like fish, but we also say to be nice. Um, kotik is like a... Uh, oops. Kotik is like a, my kitten, but we say to be nice. Uh, Medvizhonok. That's, that's the one that I like the most. My girlfriend calls me Medvizhonok sometimes. Uh, did your girlfriend love Russia? Yes, she did. She loved it. Well, there are other ways to get conduct. You know what I mean? Okay, I don't understand that. Uh, okay. You talked to me about those as Yeah, probably. So, okay. Let's get into the main lesson right now. Oops. Didn't open up yet. Okay, let's see. This is the PDF. Okay, let me, let me first figure it out. When you have so many programs open, my laptop gets a little, a little slow. But today we're going to talk about prefixes and the verbs of motion. Why is it so big? Okay, let me zoom out. Is this right? Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit sloppy today. Okay, let me, let me fix this first before I can, you know, show you anything. Boom, that's right, that's it. Sorry guys about that. Um, so, we're gonna look at these five verbs, 
which are Hadith means to be going and Iti means to go. If you know aspect, Hadith is imperfective, which is describing a process, and Iti is perfective. The reason why I included them both is because even though they mean kind of the same thing, which means to be going, to be walking, they are very different in structure. And ET is going to be more of kind of like an exception to many of the different changes. So the word ET is going to be very different from Hadith. And that's why I wanted to include them both, because they're equally, as equally important for this topic. Okay, so we're going to change them both. Next one is Bijat, which means to run. Then it's Litiet, which means to fly. And finally, Yechet means to drive. Also, sometimes we use yechet when we mean, in English we would say to go, but uh, in Russian yechet means to drive. In other words, hadid means to be walking by foot, yechet means to be driving. It can be even a bike. Something that has wheels, we're going to consider yechet, even if it's a train, even if it's a, not a boat, if it's a car, for example, it has wheels. So that, that that's how we, um, you know, kind of establish whether it's a T or yechet, et by foot, yechet by the wheels. Okay, let's get into the next slide. And the first prefix is going to be op, right here. And op is going to have an idea of around. So whenever we add op to the verb, is going to have a, it's going to have a um, idea or additional meaning of around. So the first one. Uh, hadit, we add op, it becomes ab hadit. Ab hadit means to to be walking around something. Okay. Another another phrase, another sentence can be ab hadit vrache. Ab hadit vrache means to be walking around the doctors. Let me put it in the chat so you guys can see it. Ab uh, hadit vrache which means to be walking around the different doctors. For example, if you had a medical check, right? You have to go through a person who checks your, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your back, whatever, right? I don't know how that works. So you're walking around them. You're walking kind of like in a circle, checking every single doctor. So that can be uh, used for this um, verb. Abhadit means to be walking around and collecting different you know, results for the tests. Abadi is going to have the same exact meaning right here, uh, but it's going to be just perfective to to walk around. Abadi means to, to be walking around doctors, for example, and Abadi means to walk around them. Again, just different different aspect. Abijat is going to be pretty much the same, like to, to run around something. Abijat zdania. I'm going to put in that in the chat, guys, so you guys can see uh, the sentences in front of you. Which means to run around the building. Ablitit, again, the same thing to fly around. But we have a good phrase which, which goes Ablitit всю страну. Which means to fly around the to fly around the entire country, which means to visit almost every city in the country. Or we can also say ablitet this mir, which means to fly around the entire planet or the entire earth. So you pretty much uh, are referring to you flew to every single country on earth and you can use ablitet всю планету of uh, ablitet this mir. Let me put that in the chat too. Oops. Ablitet this Mir. And the same with Abiechet. Abiechet kind of is going to have the same kind of meaning just to drive around something. Okay? I want you to guys know this. Op, which is in red, of course, it's clearly a prefix, right? But what is underlined? Und underlined is something when a stem is going to change. So if you go back, you can see that there was id here, right? But if we go to op, we see oi. So where did it go? Well, it's simply when stem adjusts when we add a prefix, okay? It's not common for 
in English, for example, or I'm not sure about other, other languages, but in Russian, stem adapts to the prefixes sometimes. As you can see, three out of five words did not adapt, right? So it's just something that I'm going to be pointing out for you guys to understand better. And the same with the last word, abiehat, you can see that there is a hard sign. The reason for it is just for ye to have two sounds. Now it sounds as abiehat, without the without the hard sign without it it would have been abiehat abiehat personally i don't like that okay so now it's abiehat okay so i guess i guess we're done with this one um let's move on to the next one next one is pre pre is gonna have uh, an idea of entering something uh, when we are coming to something we're driving to something we're flying to something First one, приходить, means to be coming, okay, to come somewhere, and since it's imperfective, it's going to be to be coming somewhere, okay? For example, the sentence can go, oops, okay, я прихожу домой в пять вечера, which means I am coming home at 5 p.m. or 5 in the evening. So, приходит means to be coming. So, I am coming home at 5 p.m. Okay? In this case, if we would not have used pre and we just used хадит, then it doesn't make any sense because we don't know. Like, приходит means to arrive somewhere, right? So, without pre, it is going to be to be walking. I'm walking home 5 p.m. Doesn't, doesn't uh, quite have the same meaning. It's similar, not the same. Next one is pretty means to come home. For example, for this one, uh, the example can be uh, pretty. Okay, for example, я приду домой в I will come home at six. Something very simple, something very, very like one-time action. While it's приходит, it's kind of like a habit of doing something. Next one is прибежать. Прибежать, the same thing, to, to run to something, to run to like a destination. Uh, for example, you can say, я прибежал первым. Okay, let me put it back to the uh, thing. Я прибежал первым. Which means, I have ran, I have finished my run first. If it's a race, right? You were running, you were track and field, you're running. And you say, я прибежал первым, which means that I have, you know, raced and I won the first place. I got to the finish first. So you entered the finish or I arrived to the finish first. Прилетит means to simply um, fly, fly in. If, you, if you're using the word прилетит, means like you've flown, you kind of like landed. Okay, for example, мы прилетели в Москву. Мы прилетели в... Moscow. Oh, which means we've flown into Moscow. For example, you're going to you're flying from America to, to Russia. And when you're in Moscow, you call your Russian friends. Я прилетел в Москву. I have flown into Moscow. Or I've I entered flown into Moscow. As you can see, sometimes the prefixes when you translate them from Russian to English can even have a separate word of meaning because in Russian we combine them two, but still the prefix has its own meaning, its own flavor to the word. So when you say прилететь, how can I, you know, put it in one word? I cannot fly. fly I cannot say fly in. I kind of have to say I arrived by flying into Moscow. But you know, it's kind of like a long thing. So in Russian we just save time and say прилететь. And the same with приехать. Приехать is just a different thing. When you're flying, of course, it's a plane. You land it. Приехать is just you drove to a city, for example, or to your guests. You can say, гости приехали, which means guests have arrived. Гости приехали. Guests have arrived. Well, guests have arrived to something. Guests have entered to my house. Something like this. So, even though I use enter right here, it doesn't have to be exactly enter. It just has a kind of like a general idea of entering. 
Of course, sometimes we have to adapt it because we are humans. It's not going to be always following that rule. Okay, now next prefix, and after this one, I'm going to take a quick break and ask you guys questions, or you guys ask me questions for clarification. I just don't want to do it after each, you know, uh, prefix. Peri means over. It can be physically over something, or it can be like um, on the other side, which means like two rivals, and you got to the other side, can be over as well. So let's look at the first one, Perihadit. Perihadit means to be walking over. It can be Perihadit через most, walking over a bridge. Perihadit через most, walking over a bridge, right? So there's a bridge and you walk over it physically. The same with PDT is just a different aspect. PDT is going to be to walk over. Perihadit to be walking over. Okay? Another meaning for these first two words can be when you are, um, for example, when it comes to soccer, or as most people call it, football outside America, uh, you can say the soccer or football player came over or yeah, came over to another team. Let me put it in Russian. Футболист перешел в другую команду. Футболист перешел в другую команду. Перешел is, is the past of PDT. Перешел dash PDT. Which means that he went over to another team. So as you can see, over can, can mean physically over something or transferred over. The same can be when it's like when it's, there's a war going on and I'm a traitor, so I PDT to another force, to another army, and I betray my own, for example. Um, yeah, something like this. So we can take it literal and we can take it illiteral. What's the other word? Figuratively and literally? So yeah, uh, we can take it like a physical thing, walking over something, or imaginary thing to walk over to another team or another side. Okay? Перебежать is going to have the same exact meaning like walking over something, um, but when it comes to running. So the same bridge when you run over a bridge. Перелететь. Okay, for перелететь, I don't quite have a good example for the verb, but we have a great noun, um, great noun, перелет, and I put it in the chat again, перелет, which means a layover, not quite a layover to be honest, but it's something like the entire flight, the entire duration of a flight, not only from one city to another, but also from, for example, from your, from your starting point, to your finishing point. <coughs> sorry. Let me actually take a sip of water, guys. I'm sorry. Quick thing. The weather is not the best here, so I kind of got a little bit of coughing. So, period. We can ask a question, which is very, very common. Um, hey all, Hunkrat, Junkrat, Privet. Сколько у тебя перелет? A question, question that people ask a lot, and I put it in the chat right here, as you can see, the last two, last two ones. And people ask that a lot which means how long is your flight but перелет doesn't mean one flight перелет means from the starting point to the finish from the starting point to the destination перелет and as you can see пере means over and лет is kind of like a flight I guess so a flight over from one place to another and we can say мой перелет пять часов my flight is five hours for example but 
we don't really use pirilitate as a verb. Let me go back so you can see the word, the fourth one. Uh, we don't quite say it as often as we use the word pirilot. Okay, so verb is not as used. Last verb in this section is piriyechet. Again, piri is over, yechet is to drive. So drive over, and you kind of can connect with the first two. Piriyechet means to move. When you move from one apartment to another. For example, you can also say, мы переехали в другую квартиру. Just, just like that. Мы переехали в другую квартиру means we moved to another apartment. Just like an example, I don't know, uh, you, meet your, you meet your friend. And he says, hey, I've been knocking on your door. I've been coming to your house every day. I wanted to see you. I wanted to say hi. And you tell him, we moved to another apartment. Мы переехали в другую квартиру. And guys, if you don't know where the sentences are, they're in the chat. I'm typing this to the chat because I cannot really put it on the screen. Well, I can't just show you the chat, but it's going to be too much me switching back and forth. Okay? So, переехать means to move. And then... Well, actually, I told you that this was going to be the last one before the break. So, okay, now is the time for us to interact, to chat. Um, you guys ask me any questions that you have. This is the time for me to answer them and kind of clear up some misunderstandings. <clears throat> I think Za is entering to something. Um, Za is kind of like to enter to, to get something. For example, for example, we can say, and again, let me type it in the chat. We can say, заехать, which means to, for example, заехать за хлебом. It's going to mean that I have driven to something to pick up. Okay, I didn't show you guys. Заехать right here. Um, when you drive to something for something else, you know, Zachleba means I drove to the store to get bread. Okay, that means Zayechet. All right, um, let me go back. And Hunkrat, I'm going to answer a question a little bit later because I have questions before that. Uh, yeah, I'll fly around the world. I would too if I had, if I only had time. Hi, Fido, learned that opposite prefix, you want to convey the idea to complete it around. Yes, maybe something. Previous means great turn. Um, I'm not sure about za as 180, and then op as is 360. I'm not sure about that. I don't think so, to be honest. Op is kind of like around. Yes, and around means 360, of course. But za would not mean 180. I don't think so. I cannot think like I cannot put put two into together. Doesn't make sense in my head. I don't know. What do you think about that? Thank you so much. Yeah, I just answered. Um, what else? This came at the perfect time. I have a test on verbs so much today. Wow. Well, I guess it's God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't cry. I'm gonna answer this a little later. Okay. After the after the topic. Okay. Okay. Let's finish this off with last two prefixes so we can chat and talk about anything rather than uh, reps of motion. So now we're talking about do. Do means to reach something. For example, um, the difference between do and pri in this case, pri means enter, remember? And enter to something. Do means to reach. So this is the final point. Do means right here, pri means go through it, right? To enter into that final destination. When you fly in Moscow, you kind of enter Moscow. When you use do, when you reach Moscow, it's kind of like you're there, but you're not in, you know? So that's the main difference between pri and do in this case. So do means to reach, and the hadith and the it is going to be to to walk, to get to something. The hadith means to, to walk, to be walking to something, and to reach that point. The it means to reach. But basically, so the IT you can easily just replace. Don't say 
walk to reach, to say, I reached the point. So the IT is kind of like, it's going to transfer from the walking uh, verb to reaching something verb. Okay. So an example for the IT. Okay. Uh, я, я дойду до магазина. Я дойду до магазина. I will reach, I will walk to, to the store, I will reach the store, I will get to the store. So that, that's, that's the IT. Yeah, they do. I will reach the store, I will get to the store. I'm not going to be in the store, I'm going to be, I'm going to get to the store. Okay? And the бежать, I think бежать in this case is, is, the, is the most boring one because it's pretty much the same thing as the, as the previous two. But instead of walking to something, you are running to it. So kind of like the same thing, the same meaning every single time. So I guess the bit is going to be the most boring one in this case. The litiet means pretty much the same thing, to fly to something. Um, in this case, pre litiet and do litiet are only going to have like a slight difference. As I said, pre means to fly in, but do means to reach something. But Okay. Yeah, I see, I see like the main difference now is in my head. I was thinking about the example. Dalitit means that you flew in the city, but the main the main point is that you've you've reached the point. When it comes to pre-litit, it's gonna be more of okay, I flew in, it's kind of like my final destination. More so. Okay. So dolitit means to reach a point, prelitit means to kind of enter the city or enter the country. I, I hope that makes sense, because again, even for me as a native speaker, it's kind of hard to decide and to think of a difference, really, because it's so it's so tiny. The difference is so tiny, teeny tiny. So it's hard really to uh, to figure out a difference. But I think dilated is more of a, when you're not so concerned about you entering the country, you just kind of tell people where you are approximately, you know. And finally, доехать means to reach something by car. Я доехал. Okay, я доехал. Oops, доехал до Томска. And Tomsk is a city in Russia. So я доехал до Томска means I have reached Tomsk. Okay. And I see guys that you have a lot of comments there. I'm gonna respond after this last slide which is going to be talking about S. And S means from, from something. Сходить, mostly in most cases, сходить is not going to follow this from meaning. Okay. Let me point. From meaning. Okay. Right there. For, dang, from meaning. Because uh, mostly we're going to use it to talk about to go to something. Okay. To attend something. For example, you can say, um, пошли сходим на концерт. For example, let's go, let's go attend a concert. Сходим means, um, it's a, the, the verb сходить right here, but in the conjugated to мы, which means us. So сходить means to attend something. So пошли сходим на концерт means let's go attend a concert. Again, it's not going to follow this from meaning. The same with, well, сайти is going to be a little bit different. Let me talk about that later. Сходить can also mean from, but in very rare occasions. This is one of the occasions. When something slides from something else and it falls down okay we use we use that a lot well of course in russia when we talk about snow okay when there's a lot of a lot of snow and it's and it's going to accumulate on the on the roof we say snake сходит с крыши let me put it in the chat again snake сходит с крыши which means the snow comes down, slides down from the roof, boom, and it falls. And it's dangerous, right? When a whole bunch of snow falls on your head, probably with some ice in it, 
it's dangerous. You can die from that. So that's why we even have a term or even a verb for that, which means, uh, you know, schadit, which means to, to come down from something. And the same with saiti, which is the second verb, saiti. It's very rare. I'm thinking about it right now. It's very rare when we use saiti. Mostly we're going to talk about schadit, which means to attend or to come from something, fall from something, slide from something. And usually, the only example that I can think of is the snow. We don't really say, oh, this mouse, or not mouse, like a, a computer mouse, was on the edge of a table, then it fell down. We don't really say it like that, you know. We don't really, I don't recall anybody saying it. So, T is just another way of saying when something slides down, usually it's snow. But in perfective way. That's all. It's it's a very small word that's very rarely used. I just have to put it like you know the prefix for this verb because since we're using all of them, why don't I include this one too? And the third one is zbizaj. And this one is very interesting. This one again bizaj means to run and run from something. U uh, if it was U, the letter U right here, means to run away, but сбежать means to run from, and it's it's going to mean to flee something. For example, there were two armies, one in the first one and the second one. Second one was so strong, it just crushed the first one, and they had to сбежать from the war place, right? They fleed the war place because they were so weak. They had to run away. They had to run from that. So сбежать means to not to betray, but to run away or to to flee. Yes, to flee something. So сбежать means to flee. Слететь. Um, we don't really use it in a. I can't forget the word in 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 a direct meaning. Like слететь means to fly from something. No, we don't really say that. What we say is. Let me put it. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Мои планы слетели, which means my plans got ruined. So слететь in this case means something like, okay, imagine this. You have all these plans lining up, right? I'm going to go to class at 1 o'clock. I'm going to go to work at 3. I'm going to eat at 4.30. I'm going to go back home at 5. All these plans lining up, right? But then... Your class got delayed, so you were late for work, late for eating, and late to go home. So your plans got ruined. It's like a uh, domino effect. One plan got ruined, and everything got ruined as well. So slated means you had all these plans, but because of one thing or two things, doesn't really matter how many things, all the plans got ruined. So slated in the phrase of мои планы слетели means my plans got ruined. If that makes any sense, because how did you get that from fly with fly from? How did your plans could fly from something? So that's that's the whole Russian for you guys. So from once once in a while you're gonna find those crazy meanings that just don't make any logical sense, but that's the whole beauty of Russian. Okay? The more you learn, the more you the more you learn, the more you know. No. The more you study, the more new things you're going to find out, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. And last word for today is съехat. Oops, it's kind of too big. Съехat. And съехat means to move out of something. And we talked about that before. Переехat means to move from one place to another. Well, съехat means to just move out of one place. Okay, so съехat квартиры. Let me put it in the chat. Съехать с квартиры means to move away from an apartment. You just leave the apartment. Okay? You just съехать from that apartment. Okay? You're not going to live in there anymore. And that's it for this topic today, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that this was helpful. Let, actually, let's just go over all of these again. Kind of like a recap. So, op means around, abhadit, all of that. Pri means to enter. Pere means over. Do means to reach. And finally, s means from. 
okay so guys right now is the time for you to, for you to ask any questions in the chat i'm going to be responding let me pull it up for you all to see too okay um can i ask one that is not really okay this came for time okay i, I saw this okay Hunkrad, Junkrad, now is the time for me to answer your question. I went to the family reunion and I have been flirting with this girl in Russian. My Russian isn't good enough, but I want to say I missed you. I said, Propustil vy. Is this unnatural? Yes, it's very, very unnatural because in English, miss has two meanings, right? To miss a, miss a flight, you know, when it's, when it's gone and you're not on it. And to miss when it comes to you miss a person, you are missing them in your life, kind of. So the way we say it is Я скучал по тебе Or Я скучаю Oops Скучаю по тебе Which means I miss you Скучать in this case is going to be the second meaning of You're missing them in your life Okay, so You messed up, bro You messed up <laughs> It's okay though I hope that she understands that you're just learning I hope you save, save the stream because I, I will note down everything you said. Yes, every single live stream is going to be, you know, recorded and it's going to be automatically automatically put on the channel. So check it out later. Same, haha, <laughs> I had to drive forth home and I don't know when, when we started. Uh, let's watch. Yes. Yes, please do as she, he said. I don't understand that. I'm a guy, okay. I'm a guy, so I said, okay, I got it. Okay, I guess it's just like a whole kind of going on without me even knowing about that. Um, can that mean to run away from something? Yes, run away. Yes, бежать. Um, I would use убежать as I said in a, in a when I was doing the сбежать. Убежать means to run away from something, and it's gonna be right here. Okay, убежать means to run away from something. Okay, this is just a whole different session. Send against movement from up to down. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it's kind of like it can mean from up to down. Not necessarily, though. Not always. As I said before, you know, Russian is so, so difficult. Some things is just... You can just not ever guess how the meaning even came around. So, sir can be from up to down, but not necessarily. I think the direction is indifferent. Yes, I'm having a hard time understanding the difference between улететь, улететь, улетать, летать. Okay, let's look at these. Okay, Carolina Capetti. I want you to watch videos on aspects. Imperfective and perfective. Just in short, and I've made actually um, last practice Friday on that. Imperfective means to be doing something, a process. Perfective means perfect, means you've done it, right? It's, it's a short action. Okay, imperfective means process. Perfective means fact, just a straight out fact. Ulitiet means to take off, to fly away. Litiet means to be, to be flying. Улетать, okay, улететь means to take off or to fly out, улетать means to be flying out, okay, it's like a process, when you say улетать, you're focusing on the process, when you say улететь, you're focusing on the fact, just the fact, nothing else, and then лететь means to be, улететь means to, yeah, лететь means to fly, simple fact, лететь. Я лечу. I am flying. Simple fact. Летать is... <coughs> you're focusing on the process. The process matters when, it's, when it comes to летать. But check out... Aspects in Russian. Th that topic is going to help you immensely. Okay, next... Uh, we have... If, if you want to say... If you want to say that you have to pay to visit a friend, you would just say сходить and заходить are synonyms. To pay, see so that you have to pay a visit to a friend. Zahadit is going to be the one. Zahadit is, is kind of like, Zahadit means you come to their home and you pick them up and you go somewhere. Zahadit means to go to them. 
Zahadit means to come after them or, or to, to come for them. You're not coming to them, you're coming for them. You know, you're picking them up or you're taking them somewhere. Okay, so that's kind of like the difference. Okay, how many suffixes of motion are in Russian Fedora? I have no freaking idea. I guess it's just, I don't know, <laughs> infinite, infinite amounts. I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest. It's such a you know difficult topic to really say anything about that because there's so many probably. Hi, Fido. Thank you for your wonderful videos. Can I support you with the donation? Of course you can, Bruno. Of course. <laughs> in the description, there's Patreon page where you can just donate money there. I would really, really, really appreciate that. Hi from Greece. Hello from America. Um, you can see the language in Czech. Yes. 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 Can be too. But Skuchat is more, you know, more universal, more, more, more used, I guess. Hello, personality, you must stop. <laughs> I'm finally back. Okay, good. Thanks, Fedora. I don't know if you answered my question. I did because I missed it. Yes, I did. I do not mercy. Okay, Karlin, do that. Do that. He said you must stop. Crap, what's, uh, what's the right way to say it? Um, let me put it back again. Ya skuchayu po tibia. Just one, just wait until it uploads to stream. She's still asleep. I've got time to recover. I'll watch the video later. <laughs> okay. Yes, so... um. You can say, okay, for you to get your word back, you know, kind of apologize for, for what you said. You say, извини, извини, я сказал, извини, okay, я сказал неправильно. Я сказал, what did you say? Let me go back. Tin, 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 tin. Я пропустил вы. Okay. Я сказал. So what am I doing? Я пропустил вы. Я имел в виду. Я скучаю по тебе. This is how you say it, okay? When you say sorry, I messed up. Okay? Sorry, I messed up. I meant to say I miss you instead of whatever so if you say that to her she's gonna she's gonna say oh okay okay i understand it now i saw that my book and i, th and I thought it was wrong whoops thanks for the russian what does poor mean poor so patibia it's like on you i miss on you poor means on kind of i mean sort of kind of uh guys do you have any any other questions any last questions before we part because my plate is full. I've said everything that I wanted to say. Uh, you know, if you have any questions that I can answer, they'll be really appreciated so we can, you know, interact and then leave. Leave each other and go about our ways. But for now, I guess there's there's nothing because the chat is still empty. There's no new messages. That's all right, though. Um, so I just want to say that I'm very excited about everything that's to come. I have seen the channel grow so much. Right now, it's 30 people watching. I remember the time when it was like five or six people watching at the time. I was like, oh, that's not good. But to be honest, I was very excited about that as well. But right now, it's 30, sometimes going to like 37. And it's really, really exciting for me. So I'm glad that I'm succeeding in this in this thing. Here you go. Some okay, I guess there's nothing else. There's nothing else that I can really answer. So guys, thank you so much for you know being here. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'm very happy to interact with you in the comments. I hope that this you know live stream was helpful to you. I hope that your verbs of motion needs have been satisfied because you know five different verbs times five different prefixes combined gives you 25 new words that you can use in your day-to-day -day speech. And I hope that this was good. And don't forget Instagram, don't forget t-shirts, don't forget Facebook community. It's all in the description under this live stream right now. And if you're watching in recording, it's going to be there as well. And Hun Krat is saying uh, that you love my content. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm never going to stop, guys. This energy is amazing and I'm loving every single second of it. So I'm not going to stop because you guys give me so much energy and so much, you know, 
um, motivation to keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm very, very excited about that. So thank you all for making me a happy 